Chapter 32 The Christmas Barrel Next day the second train came. After its departing whistle had died away, Pa and Mr. Bose came down the street carrying a barrel between them. They upended it through the doorway and stood it in the middle of the front room. Here's that Christmas barrel, Pa called to Ma. He brought his hammer and began pulling nails out of the barrel head while they all stood around it waiting to see what was in it. Pa took off the barrel head. Then he lifted away some thick brown paper that covered everything beneath. Clothes were on top. First Pa drew out a dress of beautifully fine dark blue flannel. The skirt was full pleated and the neat whalebone basque was buttoned down the front with cut steel buttons. This is about your size, Carolyn, Pa beamed. Here, take it. And he reached again into the barrel. He took out a fluffy light blue fascinator for Mary and some warm flannel under things. He took out a pair of black leather shoes that exactly fitted Laura. He took out five pairs of white woolen stockings, machine knit. They were much finer and thinner than home knit ones. Then he took out a warm brown coat, a little large for Carrie, but would fit her next winter. And he took out a red hood and mittens to go with it. Next came a silk shawl. Oh, Mary, Laura said, the most beautiful thing, a shawl made of silk. It's dove colored with fine strips of green and rose and black and the richest deep fringe with all those colors shimmering in it. Feel how soft and rich and heavy the silk is. She put a corner of the shawl into Mary's hand. Oh, lovely, Mary breathed. Who gets the shawl, Pa asked, and they all said, Ma. Such a beautiful shawl was for Ma, of course. Pa laid it on her arm, and it was like her, so soft yet firm and well-wearing, with fine bright colors in it. We will all take turns wearing it, Ma said, and Mary shall take it with her when she goes to college. What is there for you, Pa? Laura said jealously. For Pa there were two fine white shirts and a dark brown plush cap. That isn't all, Pa said, and he lifted out of the barrel one, two little dresses. One was blue flannel and one was green and rose plaid. They were too small for Carrie and too big for Grace, but Grace would grow to fit them. Then there was the, an ABC book printed on cloth and a small shiny mother of goose book of the smoothest paper with a colored picture on the cover. There was a pasteboard box full of brightly colored yarns and another filled with embroidery silks and sheets of perforated thin cardboard, silver colored and gold colored. Ma gave both boxes to Laura, saying, You gave away the pretty things you made. Now here are some lovely things for you to work with. Laura was so happy that she couldn't say a word. The delicate silks caught on the roughness of her fingers, scarred from twisting hay. But the beautiful colors sang together like music, and her fingers would grow smooth again, so that she could embroider on the thin, fine silver and gold. Now I wonder what this can be, Pa said, as he lifted from the very bottom of the barrel something bulky and lumpy that was wrapped round and round with thick brown paper. Jerusalem crickets, he exclaimed. If it isn't our Christmas turkey, still frozen solid. He held the great turkey up where all could see, and fat, 15 pounds or I miss my guess. And he let the mass of brown paper fall. It thumped on the floor, and out of it rolled several cranberries. And if there isn't a package of cranberries to go with it, said Pa. Carrie shrieked with delight. Mary clasped her hands and said, oh my. But Ma asked, did the groceries come for the stores, Charles? Yes, sugar and flour and dried fruit and meat. Oh, everything that anybody needs, Pa answered. Well then, Mr. Boast, you bring Mrs. Boast day after tomorrow. Come as early as you can, and we'll celebrate the springtime with a Christmas dinner. That's the ticket, Pa shouted, while Mr. Bose threw back his head and the room filled with his ringing laugh. They all joined in, for no one could help laughing when Mr. Bose did. We'll come. You bet we'll come, Mr. Bose chortled. Christmas dinner in May. That will be great. To feast after a winter of darn near fasting. I'll hurry home and tell Ellie.